So now I'd like to just show you a little bit of the easy to use Motorman interface. As you see here, it features a four line LCD panel that displays a large amount of information about what the controller is currently doing, as well as four function keys whose behavior is defined on the bottom line of the screen. So as you see right now, I'm set up for Locomotive 413, which my Iowa Interstate Jeep here. I've got my output track voltage and current. My speed is currently zero because I'm stopped. I have a ramp rate of one second from full stop to the maximum configured speed. Neither sensor is tripped and I have four options down here. So I have it stopped at the moment. Let's go for run. And as you can see here, it now has a configured speed of 35% in the forward direction. As soon as it hits the train spotter sensor over here, you'll notice it indicates it hit the right sensor. It's now stopped, reversing, and about to start moving again. As soon as it moves out of the way, we'll just bring it to a stop again. So if we walk through the configuration here, I mentioned that the motorman can handle up to 15 different DCC configurations. That's handled under locomotive config. And as you can see, the first one is the DC slot. So this configures the DC locomotive will go 20% of maximum speed and have an acceleration rate of 1% or of 1 second. This is 413's configuration. It's in slot number 1, and you can see just from the summary screen, address 413 is a long DCC address, 35% of maximum speed, and a 1 second acceleration rate again. So let's say we want to change the configuration here. Select that. From this screen you see that we're in slot 1. We can set the address here. We can set its maximum speed as a percentage, 0 to 100 percent, and a ramp rate in seconds. That's how fast it goes from stopped to full speed. Moving on to the next configuration screen, we can configure the functions that are active for that locomotive. So F8 would be on any time the locomotive is on. That actually is tied to our sound decoder in there to turn the engine sound on. Forward is tied to F0 to turn the front headlight on. And reverse is tied to F5 to turn the rear headlight on. In addition, we have function 1 set for the acceleration function, which actually sounds the bell for a few seconds while the locomotive is accelerating. Now we can either save any changes we made or cancel out. I don't want to disturb the configuration, so we'll just cancel. Accessory configuration is very similar. There's up to six slots, and each one you can configure an accessory decoder address. So there's my address, how the accessory decoder starts up. So if you always want a station light or a turnout to start in one position, you set the initial state to either cleared or set and then you have the trigger behavior, which is what operation on the layout actually causes that accessory decoder to change. So for example, disable means it's always disabled, it's not in use. I can have it set when the locomotive reaches the left end and cleared when it hits the right end. I can have it cleared when it hits the left end, set when it hits the right end. There's also ones that toggle on the left end, toggle on the right end, toggle on any end, also one that just sets the accessory decoder to one state, period, and never changes it. There are a number, but they're all discussed in the manual. I won't go through them all here. And as I mentioned, there's up to six slots that you can configure. You can use these for things like driving turnouts in, or in response to hitting the end stops of a layout, or you can use them for things like playing station sounds, driving station lights, changing signals, and probably a hundred other uses that I haven't come up with yet. Uh, you can also change the DCC versus DC output. This is a DCC only locomotive, so I'm not going to do that right now. You can configure the endpoint delay, which is how many seconds it will sit at either the left or the right end of the layout. You can configure midpoint delays, which is how long it will sit at any midpoint stop. You can enable or disable midpoints. You can tell it to pause when it first starts up so that the locomotive, unlike on this layout, doesn't just start moving when power comes on. You can configure rather stopping the locomotive relearns which in sensor is where. 
because if I put this locomotive on the other direction, front would actually be to the left rather than to the right. And there's also configuration about the backlight timeout such that you don't have to have to have this thing lit on the layout the whole time. You can tell it to uh, shut the backlight off so you don't have to look at it. Uh, there's also some diagnostics and there's a full factory reset if you uh, really want to clear out all your settings and start over.